In this video we will go over lighting in Unreal Engine 5. We will show you the atmosphere system, changing the angle of the sun, time of day, three types of lights, emissive materials and the post-processing volume. The easiest way to get lighting in Unreal Engine 5 is open up a template or a default map like this. So you get Lumen with the sky atmosphere system or you go to file, new level, you choose the open world or the basic level and everything is set up for you. But in this video I'm going to create it from an empty level so you can see how you can build your own lighting like this. So inside of our level, first thing we are going to do is go to modeling because I want to create some platform where my player can walk on. So for example like this should do, hit complete and I'm back to select and let's add a player start for this. So make sure you're up here. Okay and now when I hit start it's pitch black, I'm already playing my game but there's nothing to see. So we need an atmosphere system for that. Go to window and then you find here environment light mixer. Very fancy, I know. Then time to click some buttons. Create skylight, create atmospheric light. Now you don't need this one, but the sky atmosphere, the volumetric route and height fog is the ones we need. And tada, we lighted up our scene. Before you go changing things, the first thing I want you to do is click the eye icon on and off so you can see what changes here in Unreal. So then you basically see what all these things do. Okay, now when I select something here in the outliner, I can change the details. But this is very tiny, you have to really peek to see what you're doing. So what I like to do is hold and drag this off like this. So we have more room to work with. By the way, if you somehow got lost, you also go to Window, Load Layout and go back to the default one and it's reset how it started out. The directional light here, once again, you see this is needed for our light, which basically is the sun that you see right here. The source angle is the angle of the sun and it changes the sun's size. So you can go really nuts, get a big sun, something like this, or you can just hit the arrow to go back. So this is that angle of the sun and the light color right here. You can also change the color of your scene dramatically or just make it a bit darker or completely dark if you want. But you can also change this laser in the post-processing volume, just showing you here what this does. The exponential height, fog, so this you can also increase the fog density. You can also type in a number right here, so there's a lot of fog, very foggy, or just a bit of fog, and also the height fall off. Where does your fog fall and start? So you can create something like this. You can also go here underneath this to the volumetric fog, click this one, and you can really add more or less fog, make it a bit spooky, for example. So now when you rock around, you have a very spooky level. So this is how this works. You can also hit the arrows to undo all crazy changes that we made and go back to the default one. The sky atmosphere here, so this is the atmosphere you see right here. You can also change these values. You can have a little play with these, but I wouldn't go too nuts in this. The skylight, it's like an AGRI reflection upon my atmosphere. And then the volumetric clouds, it's just the clouds and the settings of these clouds. So right here you can change the altitude of your clouds, the height they're starting in, the distance of your clouds, and then the maximum distance. Now this is very finicky right here, so better to type this in. But I'm going to keep these as default. You can also change the albedo, which is the color of this as well. And then you can have a little check with this. Also, you can change it from static to stationary to movable, but since this is movable, I will keep this all at movable because then you can change the time of day, for example. I just leave this as is. Now it's time to slap my details back here, align it here. And next thing you can do is change the angle of the sun or the time of day. So that's why we need movable. So now when I hit Ctrl and L together, you can see this arrow appearing, this white arrow. When I go down my scene, it's completely dark, but then I can create something like a sunrise. You see, my sun in the sky. And when you're happy with it, let go of Ctrl L, and then you can continue working, and my atmosphere is changed by the time of day that I chose it in. Next up, I'm going to show you three different kinds of lights that you can add into your level. But before that, we're going to make a little model so we can have a more of a dark room. So let's go here back to the modeling one. So back inside of modeling, once more, go to Polar Model Cube Grid. Then let's create a wall for this. 
also here, here. By the way, I had E to pull and Q to push down. So let's create a door right here. And don't forget to hit complete because otherwise your model won't be created. Okay, and now when I go back here, select and I hit play. You can see my scene here is light up with uh, how I set it. But this little room, it is pretty dark. By the way, you can also change the exposure so when you go in it goes immediately dark or not. You can also change this later on in the different volumes and and the post-processing volume that I'm going to show you later. But this is perfect to show you about different types of light too. And now you can add this here underneath lights. And for example, let's drag in a point light. And you can already see what this does. This is your most basic light that you can drag in, except from the lumen part. Let's also get our details back so we can see a bit more. So our point light right here. The most important things you can change here is the intensity of the light. The radius of the light, so make it smaller or a bigger radius. So let's choose radius of this so it covers my scene here. And then the color. Let's get really funky right here. Change the intensity. So now when I hit play, you can really see this uh, lighting up like this. So that is your point light. Go back to lights, a spotlight. You can also drag this in. Now this is more self-explanatory. This is more from like a ceiling. Things you can change here, the inner cone, so from the inside and then the outer cone, it's more on the outside right here. You can also change the temperature feeling, so to the left it's more warm, to the right it's more cold, but I leave this as is. You can also change the color of this one, and once more the radius and the intensity right here. So you can have something like a spotlight effect, so our prayer can now perform a great show. Okay, then we also finally, back to lights, have a rectangle light which is the light from a square. So you can also rotate this a bit. Let's have this pointing down, minus 90 degrees. Let's move this up. And once more, you can choose the radius, the height of this, the intensity, and the color. So when a player goes in, I have more of a square light from where it starts. Now, when I put this higher, something like this, you can see more parts of the room are lit up. Okay, next thing on my list are emissive materials, because these materials also light up my scene. So basically what I'm going to do is get a sphere and place my sphere right here. So it's pretty dark right now, but I'm going to create a material for this. So right click, create material, and let's call this emissive, open this one up. And you can see here already a mist of color. So right click, we need a constant for this. And this will be our color. So right click and convert this to a parameter. So later on we can change this parameter. Then right click once more because we have a constant three vector. So if I open this one up, this will be my color like this. Also drag this value up so we can see my color. And click to multiply these. Plug this in like this. And plug it into the emissive. And now let's change my color here to a default value of 10 to start out with. Hit apply. And now right click. Let's create a material instance. And I do that because when I hit my parameter, I can toggle this and change the intensity. So I can really have something glowy or less glowy. Let's change it to default once more. And let's drag this on top of my sphere right here. And now you can see when I move my sphere around, you see, the lighting and the bounce of the lighting is also changed. And when I go back here, let's increase the intensity a bit more. And then I hit save. This is really intense. So you have a glowing ball with emissive materials right here. And now the next thing I want to show you is the post-process volume. So I have my sun aligned here so I can really look at the sun because I will make some changes you can see. And how you do this is you click this icon, then volumes, and post process volume, and drag this one right here. Have this box selected, and then type in infinite bound extent. So this means that whatever I apply in here in this box will be applied to my entire level. So I can really see my changes. I can take this off later. So when my player goes in this volume, you can also increase the volume of this box, then the changes will apply. 
But for now, I want to see my changes, so I'll leave this as this. And there are some pretty cool settings. The first one is, for example, Bloom. This is a fairy tale effect, so you can have more or less Bloom, depending on your flavor of this. Then you can have Lens Flare, so you can have an intensity, more or less Lens Flare. Also change the tint of this one. And increase the size of this, or decrease this. So something like summary like this should do. You can also go into color grading. So let's change the temperature right here. So this is warmer, this is colder. So let's give this a little bit more of warmth and a bit of tint. Then the global colors. So for example, when I hit this box, I can change the colors right here. I can also click on the color and then make it more like a black or white world or more happy world. Saturation is mostly done in Photoshop to increase the happiness of your photo, so to speak, but you can also do this with your game. Also the contrast, you can also test this out. And if you don't need it, just untick the box. Same for the gain, if you can see what this happens. Any offset, you can create more of a vignette. So for a cinematic like this, let's create a bit of vignette just like this. And then there are a bunch of other settings that you can go through, but these were the most important ones for color and bloom effects are the most used ones. Okay, then you go put my details back like this. Oh, once more, remember, you can go to Window Layout and go back to the default layout. And when my player now walks around, you can have pretty cool lighting from the atmosphere. You can have the different type of colors and have my sun here in my lens flare effect in a bloom world. So this is basically how you have different type of lights in Unreal Engine 5.